morning. Uh, I'm Shane Atchison. This is Steve Jarvis. Uh, Jeff talked about taking risks, and uh, I live in Seattle, and when I was packing to go on the, uh, the red eye the night before last, my wife looked at me, and she was kind of going through the bag, and she's like, you're going to take those pants? You're going to take those shoes? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, you remember Brazil? And I kind of go, yeah. And I looked down, and uh, I had the... Uh, I co-authored a book a, a year ago, and so when Jeff was talking about his book tour, it reminded me of this Brazil trip where uh, I got to go to Brazil uh, basically on the best boondoggle ever. This is probably the second best. And uh, went to Sao Paulo, and I'm speaking with, uh, with one of my best friends who I work with, Jason Burby, and, and uh, when you get nervous, you speak faster, right? And, uh, and uh, Portuguese, right, that's the, the language in Brazil, they, uh, you know, there's, there's more words to, to uh, communicate your your sentences, and so they had, literally, I'm looking at an audience of 300 people, and they all have headphones on, except for like one guy, and they're translating, and so when you're speaking fast, you know, they're all like, slow down, slow down. So I did this presentation, we had a great time, and then two weeks later, I get this DVD of the presentation, and, uh, and so I bring our whole agency together, 200 people, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, let's be transparent, let's play the video, you guys are gonna see, you know, how great we did, we play the video, and uh, I had the, this same outfit on, but I had this jacket that I, I'll never wear again. And uh, within literally 30 seconds of me presenting, I, I turn around and hand it over to my friend Jason, and I had my entire jacket tucked into my, <laughs> into my underwear. You know, not tool underwear, it was like bad underwear. And the entire time, my buddy like points at it, and he didn't, Jason didn't say a thing. And so 30 minutes I'm presenting with my underwear tucked in my jacket. So <laughs> I don't that's, know him. You know, that's my example of taking <laughs> risk. Uh, <laughs> the other thing, uh, I, I thank you, uh, Scott and Stephen, for, uh, for the opportunity to, to come. I, I uh, chose to fly Alaska Air, and you're looking at the flights coming from Seattle, and, and there was this one moment where you could, you know, you're thinking about your trip, and you basically could do a 1040 flight and get in at 720 in the morning and then have a free day yesterday, or you could fly, you know, two flights and, and basically get in at like seven or eight last night. So we did the, uh, Stephen and I did the red eye last night, went over to, to the Standard Hotel, and we're sitting there and you know, just living the life, right? It's 90 degrees and we're not in Seattle, we're having a great time. And I look over and there's uh, Brooke Hogan and, and his, Hulk Hogan's wife, that they just got divorced. They're like hanging out like right next to us with his dog Only all day. Only in Miami. Only in Miami. Yeah. And they left, we watched them for four hours and they left on paddle boards. When you're from Seattle, you got at this kind of stuff. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I appreciate this. Uh, so, uh, we're going to just basically give you a behind the scenes on uh, what we're doing for digital marketing and uh, strategy for, for Alaska Air. Uh, Steve's going to set it up and I'm going to go through uh, some of the backstory and hopefully that'll be instructive for you as you kind of see you know, how we're, we're thinking about uh, you know, very, a very uh, great opportunity and also a challenging time for the industry. Awesome time for us. It's a very challenging industry but this is such an exciting time uh, to be a marketing person in the airline industry given the, 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 di the opportunity we have with digital, especially with social and mobile and personalization. I mean, it's just a, the travel industry is a sweet spot for it. So I'm going to set this up a little bit. How many of you are from the uh, West Coast? Anybody? Okay, so maybe you guys know a little bit about Alaska Airlines. We don't have much of a brand here on the East Coast. Uh, this is a major carrier, three and a half billion dollar company, the ninth biggest airline in the country, but primarily a West Coast brand. I don't live in Anchorage. We're actually a Seattle-based company, um, but you know we have 75 years of history in the state of Alaska. And I never thought I could actually make money knowing who Band of Horses was, which is kind of cool. But we'll have, a, we'll have an opportunity, Shane and I, to, to, to play this forward here in a little bit. So that 20 will get passed along here, get ready to, to participate in a, in a, a crowdsourcing a sort of co-creation opportunity that we brought. Anyway, a little bit of history about Alaska Airlines. I think there's someone from Delta here. Is there a woman from Delta Airlines here? I saw her on the list. Anyway, our industry is, you know, it, it, it may be the shittiest industry <laughs> known to mankind. And uh, it's been kind of fun to talk, uh, come and talk to uh, different marketers in, in this horrible economy because uh, a lot of other uh, industries are now struggling like the airline industry always has. Um, we've, we've always had to innovate. We've always had to find ways to creatively, you know, effectively, efficiently uh, invest in our customer experience when we have super high costs and very thin margins. Alaska Airlines, you may not know, uh, is a 75, actually now 78-year-old company. One of the things we're proudest of is we've never been through bankruptcy. That's pretty, pretty awesome in the airline industry. <laughs> um, 
And one of the ways we've done it is this candy resourcefulness that we're proud of. It's this Alaska spirit, as we call it. We have a track record of innovation. Alaska Airlines is actually the first domestic carrier to book tickets over the internet. We were the worldwide inventor of web check-in. Um, we blew up the ticket counter in most of our hub cities. We no longer have ticket counters. So we have this, we have this history of trying to think of, of the travel experience from the other side of the ticket counter, including blowing up the ticket counter. Um, and now we're moving into this age of, like I said, of personalization, mobile and social, where we can take a look at the end-to-end -end travel experience and do uh, the, the next phase of, of uh, customer service for us, which is a contextual, connected, personalized experience. Um, so we have a proud heritage of, of customer service, and the next phase of customer service for us is really uh, digital. And one way to, to maybe best explain how we're investing in digital is I've been the CMO for the company for several years, but my, between when we signed up for this conference and now, my title's actually changed to VP of Customer Innovation. Um, what we're now doing is investing uh, heavily in the digital area. I'm spending all of my time um, working through how to connect customers to us in, in a more personal and, uh, and interactive way. Along the way, uh, this is a quick chart to kind of under, help you understand. So I, I think Jeff talked about the price of, uh, of black ink uh, being w way more than the price of crude oil, but this, th this is very significant for us. 9-11 uh, happened, obviously it shook our industry um, uh, a little over almost 10 years ago now. Um, and we had to get $300 million off of our balance sheet in a hurry if we were going to survive. Uh, th this chart shows the, the, the price of crude oil, and the, I think the message here is we're a $3.5 billion company, and when fuel went from basically 40 uh, at, at dollars a barrel in 2002 to $147 a barrel in July of 2008. That added a billion dollars of cost to our balance sheet on a three and a half billion dollar base. What do you do about that? Uh, we realized at this point that we needed to get more revenue on board the airplanes. Obviously it dropped, but you can see the point of this slide is everybody thinks fuel has actually come down. It's actually still at a very significantly higher uh, level than the airline industry is used to, used to seeing it. So you're seeing a lot of airlines like Alaska try to figure out how to uh, monetize our customers in different ways. Um, unfortunately, a lot of that monetization is charging you for things you used to get for free, like bags. Um, but one of the things we're trying to do in this connected experience and one of the things Shane and I are working together on is how to, how to uh, create a home-to-home -home experience, a, a more uh, comprehensive and cohesive travel experience, and actually sell you all of your travel. Is Orbitz here, too? I thought I saw Orbitz was in the room. Okay. Uh, Orbitz is a great partner of ours, um, but we're also looking to do a lot of what Orbitz has done, which is sell you car, hotel, tour, travel insurance, et cetera. So how are we going to do it? Uh, we're going to play to our strengths. Uh, we have a very unique brand. Uh, we have a really connected customer base on the West Coast. Uh, super, super strong loyalty at Alaska Airlines. Um, and th that I love this, the concept of fast. Uh, the T in fast is very important to us, this trust that we have with our customers. And as we move into selling car, hotel, uh, to our crews, uh, to customers. Trust will be very important and our brand will be very important. We rebranded ourselves in the past year. Alaska Airlines has uh, gone from sort of back, back of the pack to first in reliability. Uh, we have two straight JD powers and customer satisfaction. Um, so we want to build upon this uh, trust and this brand of North of Expected through uh, an online experience and then a travel experience connected via iPad and iPhone um, to, to deliver on, on, a, on the industry's best customer experience. Uh, we wanted, uh, there was a, the concept of taking risk. We're, we're going to take a fair bit of it, Alaska. Uh, not in the area of safety and reliability, um, but in the area of, on, of online experiences, we also want to be able to take a lot of risk and move very quickly. In fact, I've been telling our team, I want some quick fails. We talk a lot in our industry about quick wins, and I'm like, where are the quick fails? Because if we don't have quick fails uh, on the list, we're not, we're not moving quickly enough. And then never stop learning. Uh, we have, you know, uh, we, we fly 22 million customers around the country every year. Uh, we have about 4 million of them in our loyalty program. And uh, we, we really actually want our customers to help us continually learn and innovate and move quicker than the big guys in our industry. <laughs>